Hi everyone. This is going to be a throwback to my very first video ever in which I made these T-slot pins to go into the T-slots to help align parts on the mill table. Someone asked me recently in the comments section of that video just how accurate this technique is. And uh, I guess it all depends on how accurate the T-slots themselves are. I know the pins fit quite tightly into the T-slots. Um, and I've always just assumed that the T-slots were quite straight to the table. Of course, I use this T-slot pin trick quite a lot. Uh, and I also use the T-slots as a V-block for cutting keyways and shafts. So I'm relying on the T-slots being straight uh, quite often. Anyway, it's going to be a real easy thing to check. First thing I'm going to do is take my dial indicator and I'm going to run it back and forth across the T-slot. Um, I'm sure all three are the same. I guess I could go ahead and check them. But usually when I'm using the T-slot pins, I'm using the back one. So I'm just going to go ahead and check that. Once I have that done, I'll put the pins into the T-slot and then I'll put a parallel onto the pins so that I can see just how straight those are. Let's take a peek. So I've got my indicator set up here, and I'm going to be putting the indicator stylus just below the chamfer on the top of the table. Um, I don't want to get too low because there actually is a little bit of damage at the bottom of the T-slot where people have over-tightened bolts in the past and kind of chipped and deformed that uh, the bottom of the T-slot. So this looks like it's pretty good all the way across, and uh, I'm not expecting a lot of motion, but the T-slots are just milled, and of course this is a pretty old machine, so um, there could be quite a bit of bouncing around, I'm guessing. I'm prepared to be surprised, though. Yep, yeah, there's quite a bit of bouncing around, like I said, but it's still hovering right there around zero. Oh, a bit of a dip there, but right back up. It never really varied by more than a thousandth of an inch either way, uh, which is pretty decent. I think that's uh, that's good enough. And like I said, this is an old machine. This was built in 1963. Considering that stayed relatively steady over about half the table travel, um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So let's go ahead and put some pins in and we'll put the parallel on it and see what that looks like. So my parallel is hard up against the pins. I don't have anything holding it there, but I'm not expecting it to move very much. Let me just zero my indicator. All right, that looks good. And I'm not expecting this to bounce around nearly as much because the parallel has a much smoother surface. Little bit of movement there. So I've got a bit more than a thousandth of an inch over six inches. Let's just push back on it. And yeah, that's pretty solid. So it's not moving around. I just want to interject with some voiceover here to discuss possible sources for this error. And first and foremost, I've miked the parallel, and that's within one-tenth of a thousandth. The pins also measure the same diameter, so I think the obvious choice is the damage that's in the T-slot that I mentioned before. You can actually see some damage to one of the other T-slots there at the bottom of the screen. Someone obviously over-tightened the T-nuts and possibly even used uh, carriage bolts from the looks of some of the damage. Unfortunately, this sort of thing is not too uncommon. You see this kind of damage on a lot of older machines. Well, it's maybe not the most accurate thing, but most of the time when you're doing this, you've got a plate that you just need some holes drilled into it and you don't particularly want to indicate it in. So for quick and dirty jobs, this is certainly good enough. This video is almost certainly going to be longer than the one that actually prompted the question, so I'll go ahead and cut it off here. 
But thanks again for Roque for asking. I hope this answered what you were looking for, and it certainly sparked a little curiosity in me. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below. Also, maybe consider heading over to Patreon and help support the channel. Feel free to ask any more questions down in the comments, and maybe I'll give you a shout out in the answer video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.